We have already been playing with a number of methods in this course, but unlike the methods we have seen thus far, the majority of VBA methods require arguments that we haven't learned how to use yet. So we're about to learn to program methods and method arguments. As a reminder, methods are the verbs of VBA because they cause an object to take an action. Almost all methods have something that we call method arguments. Technically, they're called parameters, but no one uses that term. So these method arguments help define how the method should run. Method arguments are just like the function arguments in regular Excel. Think about a common function that you use in Excel. Inside the parentheses for each function, you have function arguments, and they influence how the function performs. Some arguments are optional, some require specific data types, and sometimes there are no arguments at all. Method arguments work the exact same way. While method arguments behave very similarly to Excel's function arguments, method arguments are written out very differently. So let's sink our teeth into the syntax. As you've come to expect now, we will need to start with the object.method. Now, so far in this course, this is as complicated as our methods have been. We have already been using quite a few methods that work just like this. They need no further programming, such as range.clear, range.clearFormats, worksheets.delete, worksheets.resetPageBreaks, rows.insert, columns.insert. We've seen a lot. And for these ones, nothing else is required after the name of the method. But the vast majority of methods in VBA have arguments. Let's look at some methods we are already familiar with, starting with the worksheets objects add method. We have already used this method, but we used it in its simplest form without any arguments. But it does have optional arguments that we could use to help us accurately place the newly added worksheet either before or after a specific worksheet. So let's learn how to use these method arguments. Much like properties, methods also require a space immediately following the method name. And after that space comes the argument name. And now we need to clarify which sheet the new one will go after. This additional clarification is provided using method values. In these cases, you will see the argument name immediately followed by a colon and an equals sign. And then I'll simply clarify which worksheet I want this to come after. Let's run it and sweet, it works. If you ever want to look up the arguments for a specific method, simply use the object browser. Search for the object and scroll to find the method and then Use the syntax hint right here. It's not written out like the method argument syntax. It kind of looks like an Excel function syntax, but it gives you a good idea of how this thing works. And look, there's actually a couple other arguments I didn't even mention about add. I'll leave it to you to explore those arguments on your own, but I do want to take this chance to point out a couple really important things. First, unlike Excel functions, VBA methods do not require you to enter every single argument. Notice in the last example, I only used one argument, even though this method actually has four. And that's because these arguments were optional. Mandatory arguments are less common, but they definitely exist. You'll recognize them because they won't have the square brackets around them in the object browser's syntax hint. Okay, the second important thing, if you do want to use multiple arguments, just separate them with a comma, just like you would with Excel arguments. Let's take a minute to revisit some methods we have already used and see if they also have some neat arguments we should know about. You may remember this graphic from an earlier video. We just learned the add method. So let's go to the next one. Let's do copy. Now, before I get too big for my britches, I'm gonna check the object browser to see what method arguments are available for this one. Okay, simple, just before and after. So when we copy this worksheet, we have the choice to place the copy either before or after a specific sheet. Okay, cool, let's give this a shot. I'm typing in my object dot method space argument name colon equals method value. Okay, and let's run it. Hot dog. All right, let's try a totally different object, range. 
And we all know how often we need to copy ranges, right? Well, the ranges copy method is going to behave mostly the same, but there's a little difference. So let's open the object browser to check it out. There I can see the arguments are a little different than the worksheets copy. The range copy has just this one argument destination. Same concept, but different argument name. So I'll type object dot method space argument name colon equals and method value. Let's run it and it works beautifully. Let's have you give it a shot. Today's exercise has us working in multiple sheets, so it's time to start enforcing a best practice and that's our explicit notation. For example, when we are talking about range A1, if I only have one worksheet, you know which range A1 I'm talking about. But if I have multiple worksheets, it's a really good idea to start defining which worksheets range A1 we are talking about. You are going to want to do this for each task in our exercise today. Our scenario today is we are making a macro for the payroll team. They want to formalize the timesheets that get turned in by the contractors. So they've made this template and they want contractors to be able to run a simple macro, which will duplicate their timesheets for each week in the month and copy the relevant information to each timesheet. So we are going to make them a macro to do just that. First, you're going to want to open the exercise file or generate some data that looks like this. So you might want to make a couple extra copies of this file. Once you've done that, you're going to open up the file, you're going to create a new module and a new procedure, and you're going to create a macro that does the following. Start by copying the contractor's name from the summary worksheet B2 and paste it on the timesheet, which is also in cell B2. Then on the timesheet, we're going to clear all the contents that are here in the table between B6 through F9. But we're just going to clear the contents. We're not going to clear the formatting. After that, we want to merge cells A1 through F1 on the timesheet. And once we've done all of that, we're going to create three additional copies of the timesheet worksheet. Have those copies go after the timesheet. You're probably tired of hearing me say this by now, but remember to post on this video if you need any help. And if you get it working, go check out the comments section to see if you can help anyone else. Happy excelling and have fun.